Hey guys, Jose here with another rendering tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at interior lighting workflows with Arnold and 3ds Max. Now, of course, there's a lot of different ways of rendering interior spaces. I'm going to be approaching this from a very traditional workflow, which is using a sky dome in combination with sky portals. So many other renderers out there support these workflows, and of course, Arnold does as well. Um, this is a data set we're going to be using, and in this specific state, I stripped away all the textures and all the shaders so we could focus exclusively just on the lighting solution itself. So let's jump right in. We're going to go ahead and create an Arnold light. We're going to set ourselves to Sky Dome, pop it into our scene, and start rendering. I like to render with active shades so that any changes I make, uh, we see that being updated in the render frame window automatically. We can go ahead and, of course, change our Sky Dome color uh, to something a little bit more natural. We can adjust the exposure on our Sky Dome and as well as the intensity uh, in order to achieve the lighting solution or the light uh, the illumination levels that I'm after. So with just this sky dome rendered with this amount of noise, we're going to reduce noise later. This took 19 seconds. Let's go ahead and bring in our sky portals and see how much uh, less noise we have for the same amount of render time. So we're going to go ahead and create another Arnold light. This time we're going to set ourselves to quad lights uh, to create area lights. These are essentially area lights in Arnold. We can adjust them and position them at our openings where we have windows and doors, adjust our um, X and our Y values. Once I've created a few of these, put them inside of my scene around around my uh, building here where we have doors and windows, we go we can go ahead and set ourselves to portal mode. Now when we set a quad light to portal, it basically acts as a portal for the sky dome. Uh, it's no longer acting as a quad light. And you, of course you need to have a sky dome in your scene. Let's go ahead and jump into camera mode. The next thing we need to do is select our sky dome and set its portal mode to either interior only or exterior and exterior. Because we're rendering just the interior of our space, we're going to set ourselves to interior only. So now, again, same settings. I haven't adjusted any of the sampling in Arnold. We're going to bring this image into our RAM player so we can compare it. And we're going to render it out. And you'll see that for the exact same amount of rendering time, actually one second faster, uh, we have a much less noisy image, right? And of course, this noise, we're going to reduce this later on in a different video where it's going to be all about noise reduction, um, and we'll see how to get that done. Let's keep going here. Uh, the next workflow that we're going to add to this... No. Let's keep going here. Uh, next thing we're going to do is add a little bit more uh, contrast to our sky dome. Right now, our sky dome is illuminating with a static and constant color. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change that. So on the Sky Dome, uh, you see here on, under Color Intensity, it's currently set to Color, but we can also set it to a texture so we can override that with an actual you know, map itself. We're going to be using a HDR image uh, to add a little, bit more, uh, a little bit more contrast from the lighting that's coming in from the outside. This is the HDR image that we're going to be using. Um, and we can just bring it right into our slate editor. Um, we're going to adjust the mapping coordinates, so I set ourselves to environment, and we want it to be on spherical. I'm going to offset it just a little bit, so it rotates in place a little bit. And I'm going to set my tiling to a negative one. This basically acts as a mirror. I could have just checked the mirror checkbox as well. It would have done the exact same effect. Uh, so this, we can plug it right into our sky dome, and we can start seeing that already take place in the render frame window uh, while Active Shade is running. Now, what's nice about this workflow is I can make adjustments to the image that's plugged into the sky dome while Active Shade is running, and I see exactly how this is impacting the final render. So once I've made the modifications uh, that I'm satisfied with, what I can also do is connect to my bitmap or my HDR into an Arnold color correct node. This is going to give me uh, deeper control over the uh, levels of the actual image. I can color correct essentially my HDR image. Of course, I need to replace the shaded tree now in my sky dome um, so that I can see the effects take place in the final, uh, final rendering. Um, and I can do things in here like adjust the exposure, pump this up a little bit so that I have a lot more lighting coming through, brightening up the image. I can adjust the contrast, things like that. Um, so as you see, a really nice way to add a little bit more um, interest to the final image.